A while ago, I challenged you guys to an SVG challenge. I had just finished my SVG series, and instead of just following along with what I was doing, I wanted you to take SVGs, what you learned from that series, and do something cool with them. In this video, we're finally going to look at what some of you guys created for that challenge. So first off, just let me give a big apology for taking so long to make this series. I have just been, you know, real life happened and things got in the way, but we're here finally. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Before I start saying anything, I just want to apologize to everybody for getting their names wrong because I'm probably going to do that. Now, with that said, first up here we have Guillaume de Bloc, and this is a fun little SVG thermometer. So I really like this. It's nice and clean. Looks really good. Um, nice choices and colors too. Um, just a nice simple one, but he did take the extra time to build in a little animation here. So uh, when the page loads, it starts blue, and then as the temperature comes up, you can see it. Um, well, it fades over to red, and it looks pretty nice. So if you uh, we go and look in his SVG, you can see there's an inline style here that is um, giving us all of our colors on everything in here. Now, one thing I like is he did also use a CSS custom property for the fill right here. So this is the blue color that we saw. So let's just say I change this to yellow. You'll see that uh, when the fill starts, it's starting as yellow and then transitioning over. Um, for all the little animations we see here, um, he's setting it all up using uh, the GSAP like we looked at. So uh, we can see here it's setting up a new timeline and he has it all going. Um, and one nice thing about using the CSS custom property here is um, because the fill is being defined here, he's just redefining fill. He doesn't have to find the selector. He doesn't have to worry about anything like that. He can just say at the end, the fill is changing from whatever it was to this over here. So it's a, a cool use of um, CSS custom properties to be able to do that instead of having to try and figure out what specific selector to get or something like that. So it's a fun little SVG and a really nice use of GSAP here. So really nice, Guillaume, and thank you for sharing that. Really, really cool. Uh, number two here we have, so this one is by not Ben Mansell, who I'm assuming your name is Ben Mansell, but um, a fun little one. And it creeped me out a little bit, to be honest. Uh, the eye in the middle, I was looking at it I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's a nice little thing um, going some colors shifting around and then all of a sudden the eye blinked and I'm looking at it now maybe I missed it at the beginning but yeah that eye blinking uh, caught me off guard <laughs> let's just say that um, but just to take a quick look is he approached us a little bit differently than what I did in my SVG series and looked at something or used something that I did wasn't using at all so and now I almost feel like I'm imagining that eye blinking since it's not blinking anymore. Let me reload this whole thing in. I'm sure I saw that eye blink. There it is. Aha, I knew it did. Okay. Um, so uh, what he did is, if I come and look in here, um, he does have a keyframe. And the keyframe is used for the pulse. So this on the outside, we have the, the color pulsing around here so he just has a nice little thing that's a 15 second animation so it's taking a while for those colors to shift um, and that's just for the outside over there but over here on the SVG itself um, when we look in here what he did is use um, animate transform um, so the animate transform allows for things like scaling and rotation it's built into SVG um, so yeah, it's scaling rotation a little bit more as well and here he's using uh, rotation here and it's just a continuous animation but um, yeah you can see the attribute is a transform type is rotate duration so how long the whole thing takes we're beginning at zero seconds so it's beginning right away and it just goes on forever and it's just a nice little um, so yeah it's a nice way to build it into the SVG instead of having to use some JavaScript if you don't need to so really nice job, uh, Ben. I'm guessing it's Ben, not not Ben. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. I liked it a lot, uh, apart from the creepy eye blinking at me. Um, now this one, I think, was my favorite one. Uh, this one here is by DocZ, and I'm just going to make one small change so we can actually uh, get the whole thing in here. Um, SVG, let's just do a height of like 
100 vertical height just so it can squeeze in because um, the artboard was a bit too big for the recording size I'm on because I, I don't record at full screen. Um, so normally the Powell was down here underneath before we do that. Um, and the reason it's my favorite isn't because my name is on this one. <laughs> um, this one, as I mentioned, is by DocZ, and it's his first ever SVG animation. And to me, that's just awesome. Uh, some other people did some fancy stuff, and some we're going to see after a couple of really incredible things. Um, but Dox here is my favorite because he went out of his way to try and do something he'd literally never done before. It's a fun little test run on this, but this gets to the heart of the SVG challenge to go in and try something new, something you've never tried before. So major props to Doc Z. You watch my series. You did a few things in here that I didn't even I have I didn't do in my series. You have this um, the nice little lines going around there. So um, yeah, no, just really really nice. If we go and look quickly in here, how he's doing it, um, you can see he is using an animation. So he is using some animate transforms. He's also, you can see here, he has an animation on here as well. Um, so yeah, just overall, I think that's really fun, really awesome that you uh, really took this to heart. And thank you so much, uh, Doc, for trying this out. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a silly one, but at the same time, um, a really fun one. Uh, just playing around with the different things that you could be playing around with here. Uh, next up, we have one here by David Howard. And this one's impressive. Um, so he's built a JavaScript module that generates SVG images. So we're, we're getting our SVG images of aircraft instruments. And he has an API for it to manipulate the instruments, which is how we can get them to move around and everything. And SVGs work really well here as each instrument can be a single SVG. So if we go into the repo itself, which we have linked there, I'm just going to go in this example one, the static folder, um, and he has some of the SVGs in here. So if I go and look, um, there's the SVG, I can look at the code, and we can see that he's uh, got the SVG in there. So because we have all these pieces in there, it makes it possible for him uh, to be able to uh, go back a couple more steps, sorry, to control them all uh, individually and with some clever JavaScript, he can do that with his API to actually get these to work the way you know they need to work, which is just really, really cool. Uh, a really nice job and a really nice uh, use of SVG, really. And it's a really nice application of SVG that's something I personally never would have thought of, uh, but I think it looks really, really cool. So really uh, nice job. And yeah, it's also, you know, it's SVG. So as it says here, res uh, resize me, I'm responsive. Um, so yeah, just really, really nice stuff. And this is one of the earlier ones that came in. So I'm not sure if you were working on it earlier before I started the challenge, but just, it ha you know, I had to take a look at this because um, a, a clever implementation, uh, in my opinion. I really, really like what you did with this. Next up, we have one that's a little bit of magic. <laughs> So I'm going to click over here. Um, I'm not going to the code pen. I'm just going over here to the GitHub. This one's by OT over on Twitter. And as I said, this is a little bit of magic. So we're on the GitHub repo. So if you're interested in checking it out, um, I'm going to just scroll down here because just because he has a few little um, videos or uh, GIFs here showing us how it works. Um, so he has, um, I'll, I'll scroll down a bit more. Um, this is the one I want to look at. Um, so. I'm going to say from his own words, he invented a menu for Illustrator from Illustrator using Vue to control SVG code from SVG code. So there's a lot to unpack there. Um, but basically, he has, uh, he created the menu for Illustrator well inside of Illustrator. Um, and he uses Vue, uh, which is a JavaScript um, framework if you're not familiar with it which is controlling the SVG code that's coming from SVG code. So here, from what I understand of this, and it's a little bit beyond me to be honest, but um, we have the SVG code that's gonna be in here, and he can use this, he makes a selection here in Illustrator, and uses his menu to manipulate it. So we can see that it's, um, you know, this is top clockwise, I'm guessing. So you can see all the pieces turn clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise, clockwise again. So you can see that they're rotating based on the angles that he's picking over here. Um, and I'm guessing the 10, 30, and 40 um, gives us different perspectives. So that's, you know, 
all done with SVG and uh, set up with Illustrator and stuff like that. Um, as I said, it's a little bit of magic as far as I'm concerned. This is a bit uh, beyond me to a certain extent. But if you see this as being something useful, he's done some other really, really uh, cool things with Illustrator as well. So you can definitely come and check out his uh, GitHub profile over here. Um, or I'm going to link, you know, this will be linked down below. Number six, this one was emailed to me, and it wasn't an official entrant into the challenge. It's by Gunman, and he actually specifically said that he did, wasn't interested in the challenge, but he wanted to show me what he was up to or something that he'd already created. Um, and I actually asked him if I could feature it, just because I think it's a really nice way to finish things off um, and wrap it up. It's a really nice use of... It's a really nice example of using SVGs on a working site um, in a way that's fun. The animations aren't over the top, but they sort of grab your attention. Um, and it's just a nice overall layout as well. So if I scroll down here a little bit, we're going to get to the next one. So each sort of section of this has its own little SVG over here, and they all have their own little animation. So really cool. Um, all of them he created, all the SVGs he created in Illustrator, he optimized them with SVG OMG, just like we looked at doing. Uh, and he animated, or actually he did some manual optimizations on top of whatever SVG OMG came out with. Um, and on top of that, he was using GSAP to do the animations. So really, really nice stuff. Um, he said the hardest one to do was, I'm gonna keep going a little bit here the bread cutting one. I think it's the next one after this. Yes. Um, so he said this was the hardest one to do and just looking at it I can definitely see why this would be the hardest one to do. Um, there's a few little, you know, just the, the logic sort of having to come into this one to make it work properly uh, and all the pieces to be working in harmony whereas the other ones sort of, they're a little bit simpler. You know, the bread has to go back and everything <laughs> like that. It's cute. Um, uh, but yeah, I just think that overall he did a really nice job with this. There's nothing overly complicated with these animations. He's taking nice simple things using uh, GSAP, which helps make our life easier to do the animations. Um, and it's, you know, creating these nice, clever looking things. So just a really nice job that I definitely wanted to uh, feature here. And there you have it. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff from you guys. Really, a few of those were just like, <laughs> those were things I, you know, my SVG, <laughs> you were putting my, my SVG series to shame a little bit with some of the things in there. And then we had other things like Doxy. It's still just incredible. It's the first time he ever used SVG animations. And for me, that's a huge thing. That's just like, um, that I can inspire someone to at least take a stab at it and then start learning and pushing themselves with that. That's just really, really, really cool. So just because the challenge is done doesn't mean you can't take it upon yourself to try it out. If you do, just make sure um, if you hashtag it, just also include a, a mention to me so I actually see it. But if you ever play around with SVGs, do anything with them, I'd at the very least just share them on, you know, I can retweet and whatever on social media. Just I'd love seeing what you guys are building. So don't be shy about that. As far as other challenges in the future, some there's been questions about it. There will be more challenges and more community featurey stuff in the future. I haven't hashed all of it out in my head yet, but uh, it seems to be something you guys want. So I'm going to try and figure out some ways we can make that work a little bit like this. But um, yeah, I've got the wheels turning. If you have any ideas, please leave a comment down below and I'd be glad to hear about them and talk about it a little bit or hit me up on social media, whatever it is. Um, and until you do that, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.